On Monday, this is our second annual Green Grid collaboration session with the Technical Forum. So Data Center Pulse, what are we first? Data Center Pulse is a bunch of end users coming together to actually collaborate and share information and hopefully influence the industry based on the things that they consume, the ideas they have, the problems they are trying to solve, putting that back out to the industry. The reason we have the top 10 is to give every vendor in the room, anybody creating products or services or solutions for people like us, insight into what's important. Okay? So we've got now 2,271 members in 61, 66 countries, I think it is. Okay, that represents 1,000 different companies. These are individuals at all different levels, from mechanical engineers back up to CIOs. There's a great mixture of those people inside of the room. Okay, so on Monday, we had our summit, and what we do with these is we bring people together and they choose the topics that are important to them. So the top three that came out was Project Mercury, because it encompassed so many different things that were going on. We went into depth for three hours on Project Mercury. And can you imagine a bunch of engineers from all these different companies? I'm talking Microsoft, Yahoo, Salesforce, right? Uh, Equinix, a whole bunch of these companies in there, challenging everything, asking the questions, why would you do this and, and those things. It was awesome. It literally was awesome. And it was, these are some of the most rewarding sessions for me because it validates and also questions and challenges your thinking on so many levels that you have to really now think, oh, how, would that apply in my environment? Would I change something here? But also, yep, that was the right decision. Or nope, that wasn't the right decision. We also share the things that went wrong. Okay? So I'm, I'm talking about level three PUE. Why was it so hard to actually get? Decisions about infrastructure and other components that were, uh, were great lessons learned for a lot of the folks inside of the room because we went through the pain. We want to share that, and I'm sh they're sharing pains back with us that they've already seen. You can take a look at datacenterpulse.org slash join me if you're interested. If you're an end user, we are kind of uh, very tight about who is an end user, <laughs> all right, because that's really what the value of the group is. Um, I'm going to also step you through really quick. We started this in 2009 at the very first Data Center Pulse Summit back when I was at Sun Microsystems, and we hosted it there and brought people together. <laughs> and I see faces in the room of people that were actually there, Michelin and, and a number of other folks. Um, this is what we came up with before. And I won't go through these, but what you see to the right is the progression. So we went from this type of top 10, and the orange ones were changed in 2010. I remember uh, uh, the 451 group had bought the Uptime Institute, and I think it was, is it Skip, or I forgot the guy's name, who runs 451 group? Um, Martin. Martin, yes. Martin sits down to me and goes, yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw your update. And he said, uh, he goes, so dump the tier levels, huh? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> Let me explain why. So we modified this too to update the tier levels to represent the current data center environment. That's the kind of thing, and those are great conversations to have. They want to know, right? They change things based on what? End users application or feedback on what, what is going on. Okay, I won't go through the other pieces here, but now you can see from 2010 to 2011, we we're changing a couple things. Now, from 2011 to 2012, we've actually changed over half of them. The very first one is we went from industry alignment to facilities and IT alignment. I'm putting this back on my community because the reason we all have such a hard time doing things is that internally facilities and IT fight. You can't get to the efficiency unless you've got the right people at the table that can actually have the right conversations and change the behaviors. So the big guys have figured it out. Why have they figured it out? Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, eBay, I mean think of that. It's because the volume of stuff that we buy and the costs are visible to the CFO. Suddenly there's a lot of scrutiny and you start to look at it and say, why is that? That organizational structure allows us to truly go after the same goal. The other side is the performance is lined up with the CIO, the technology is with the, the CTO and suddenly data centers and infrastructure become critical to the business. The C-suite starts to care about it. That's where I, I want the small to mid-sized data centers out there, which probably represent more load on the infrastructure than all of the large data centers combined. Okay, I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but it's real. There's tens of thousands of these things out there, of companies that do this, and there's hundreds of thousands of them outside, right, or of data centers themselves. So once we get this alignment, we're going to get more better products and services. 
because we can truly solve the real problem. You think about the containers and the standardized SKU we did. We suddenly solved the business problem, the performance of IT infrastructure, and gave optimum in, uh, performance of the mechanical electrical inside. All right, second. <laughs> That's a little hard to see. Simple top-level efficiency metric. We've asked for this for three years now. I'll cut to the chase. We turned it around ourselves again and said, so there's all this, this, this um, work going on inside of the industry, but we haven't made the progress with it. Why don't we have a miles per gallon measurement? So we actually took real data from one of our companies, and we sat down and came up with what that metric looks like. So we have a miles per gallon proposal internally that we went over on Monday. That was the number two topic everyone wanted to hear about. There is great alignment here from a, data, from a uh, green grid standpoint. Because I look at the productivity metric and what's going on there, it's this way, going up technically on all the different layers of what they are. This one is top down. This is a business metric. What's important to the C-suite? What will drive the right behavior and change in the business and goes this direction? Those two will converge at some point because they still need all those specific engineering metrics underneath of how they represent the numbers going up. But we need a top level miles per gallon one. We don't have the details to share out with you yet. Trust me, there's a year's worth of data looking at all this stuff already. We have trends across all of that and great discussion and debate with the, the, the actual data center Pulse members. This ties into three different things, performance, um, cost, and the environment. Once you have transactions per watt, work that's done, you can say cost per watt, you can say carbon per watt, you can say all those different things. It becomes very easy to make this extensible to all those different business drivers and, and needs. One other part, this will be a proposal. It took PUE five years to get there. Okay, we all have gone down this road. It doesn't just come out and say it's the answer. This is what we're going to get to. All right, the next one is stack framework. And if you haven't seen this before, this is something we were developing to help facilities and IP people, people actually have the same language to understand the layers and how they communicate and how they're connected, okay? And so we've seen this come back in proposals and all types of things that people are helping to have the conversations across the borders. And this will align us back in with facilities and IT coming together. We're still doing the work on this. Um, move from availability to resiliency. Tier four data centers don't solve all the problems. Resilient applications are where everything is going, which means, like you heard, tier two data centers become absolutely applicable to the applications that are running for 80% of our environment, et cetera. Renewable power. I'd like to bring this up right now. <laughs> there are not enough choices in this country for companies to pick from. There are not opportunities to get clean power that are cost effective. The reality is companies choose a location and when they do that, it's a long-term investment. If you're in that place, you need to solve it in that state. You need to solve it in that province, where you are, unless you're gonna pick up a couple hundred million dollar investment and move it somewhere else. But anybody citing a, a choice in an area, there's no reason you can't go back and actually ask business development, the economic development groups inside of each one of those states, governments, that clean power is a priority for you, okay? I will tell you in one region where we are, it's illegal for me to invest in anything in renewable power off of my property. That's from a law in 1939. It is, seriously, and it's a regulated environment. So suddenly it's extremely difficult for me to get what I really want. That's a corporate priority for us. But I can't get there without legislative change. So you can imagine what we're doing around that front. So renewable power options, extremely important. Another part is containerized versus brick and mortar. <laughs> As I said, those containers, this was a great discussion inside of the group. Hmm. Five years ago, when the first containers came out, we were saying, this will replace data centers. You can just put them in a parking lot. It took four or five generations of products and now results of those things to say, I might actually be able to run a data center in a container. Okay, and I say container in quotes because it's a module, but it's, you know, it's not just an ISO container. It's a box of some sort. That is absolutely come back around to the same argument. What do I build? And that goes into the next topic. Hybrid data centers. Do we build brick and mortar data centers that have raised floor space to deliver racks? People are starting to really consider, I could have containers, I could have racks, I could have a hybrid environment, multi-tier. Suddenly all these things start to change the way that data centers are designed. 
Okay? That's very important for the people that do engineering work and architectural work. How can you go back and deliver business value to them that continues to cut the cost, gives you agility around multi-tier, and allows you to now take on the next technologies that are landing in it? The folks that are doing all air data centers, I commend you. It's great. It is the right answer right now. What happens when we go forward and there's liquid-cooled equipment? Okay? What are those changes? Do you have to rebuild the data center for it? If you have a modular solution, you might be able to just land a container that has that stuff in it. Hybrid. All right, next one, liquid cool IT options. I keep lining right back up to these. There, the leading indicator of what's going on is the high performance computing environment. If you look at anything out there, I know there's a 100 kilowatt install. I think Clustered Systems did one with one of the uh, HPC. 100 kilowatts in a cabinet, okay, all liquid cooled. Interesting. So why would they do that? Because they're trying to get the maximum performance out of that equipment. What are we doing in data centers? We want to get the maximum performance out of the equipment. I'd like to use the smallest amount of equipment to do that as possible. We start to hit the ceiling of air. There is a ceiling, and it's, it's, we found it. It's 28 kilowatts with a certain amount of area in a container. All right, the next one is free cooling everywhere. Let that sink in, too. We just proved that we could get free cooling in a desert with temperatures reaching 119 and above Fahrenheit. That is aligning the vendors and the warranted equipment actually operating those environments. The next challenge here, why can't we do that everywhere? Humidity is another big one. Great. Then the challenge should be, why won't we get 100% humidity, a solution for that in Singapore? That seems to me to be the worst case scenario. Once the temperature's there, now it's about the humidity. How do you solve that? Free cooling everywhere. Everybody should have that on their mind. We should be figuring out how to do it. The next one, converged infrastructure intelligence. This ties the whole thing together. The infrastructure itself, the data center, has become a complex IT system. When we were measuring PUE, 1.5 billion measurements over one month in Project Mercury. What the hell is that? 1.5 billion, that's not a joke. So those numbers, we're thinking, oh, okay, our frequencies might be, we shouldn't do it every seven seconds on everything. <laughs> we should be doing it maybe five minutes here, 15 minutes, but the point is, figure out that. The infrastructure now needs to go up the stack. Well, you have to connect all that into something that allows your IT applications to map and control the environment. That's all coming. Great, so this is the top 10 list. My format and got all screwed up. Um, but. This all came out of literally three or four years worth of collaboration with my peers. That's really, really important here. So is this the answer to everything? No, but it is absolutely the pulse right now from the active members inside of Data Center Pulse and all the activities, conversations, and collaboration that's been going on. Excellent. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Dean, folks. so much.